Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Brendan Lee from Consciousness and Skill Worldwide. Welcome back. I'm back from Europe. <clears throat> I just spent about a month teaching and touring in Europe. It's been great. I feel like I delivered a lot of value to people and got a lot of uh, um, people to train their bodies in new, new ways. So thank you. I'm back. I'm back. <clears throat> Letter. Okay, this is not a letter, this is a post on a, I have a discussion board on my website for people to write in that if they have things that are curious about. Hi Brendan, so I've been recently going through the Book of Not Knowing again and working more on contemplation work and specifically contemplating awareness and the practice of being aware of being aware. I think this practice is finally starting to take off and I'm having some insights into the practice and what it means to be open in the state of not knowing and just wondering about what awareness, I'm assuming is, what awareness is. But as I contemplate, it still feels inauthentic on a deep level, like I have these beliefs and assumptions running in the background that I don't know how to overcome and transcend. I understand that doing this is part of the work, but I still feel stuck. It's like I can subconsciously feel that my beliefs about reality are a veil over my perception and are hindering me from inquiry and not knowing. As I recently started reading the book, I started to participate, pra excuse me, I started practicing the emptying your cup exercise, and I think it's a valuable practice to go through as many of our beliefs as we can and distinguish direct experience and true insight from belief. But I'm having trouble discerning what direct experience and true insight are because I haven't had a direct experience before. Fair enough. I think I may be getting stuck on semantics too much, but I'm not sure. It's like a catch-22 in that I feel like I need a direct experience before I can distinguish between belief and true insight, but I don't know how to get that first direct experience to give me a glimpse of what is true and what is false. When working through the exercise, I've read all about how our belief how our, belief that, uh, how our belief that we are a separate self is just a belief. But when I contemplate it, my experience of self feels so real and feels like a direct experience over a belief and feels like a direct experience over belief, so I'm getting stuck because I truly experience myself as a direct experience. Any thoughts on how to go about discerning direct experience from belief in my situation? Thanks so much in advance. I really appreciate the work that you're doing and found your YouTube page, and I'm getting back into your content as well. Thank you for writing in. <clears throat> so I've been recently, okay, let's see. So I'm going to say some stuff in relationship to this uh, expression of confusion or, or, or call for help or whatever, the letter, the, the inquiry, and we'll see what happens. Um, so, but I, as I contemplate, so the first part, okay, I get it, working more on contemplation work and contemplating awareness, good, and you're in the practice of being aware of being aware, good, and you can even contemplate what awareness is, like what is awareness? And then you will be looking at awareness itself and you can contemplate that, that could be useful. But as I contemplate, it still feels inauthentic on a deep level. Well. So it so here's some stuff. So as you're contemplating, as you're wondering about stuff, as I've wondered about things in the past, things may arise as a result of the contemplation. And one of those things that could arise is a feeling of inauthenticity, perhaps. So if that's the case, perhaps be open that Maybe what you really think is whatever it is you're contemplating. Now, again, I don't know that I can add too much value here because I would need to ask you and clarify with you, like, what exactly are you contemplating? What are you doing when you contemplate? You know, what are you working on? And then what comes up as a result of that contemplation? So the first thing I should do is get clear. Um, since I'm not doing that, I'm going to spit some stuff out that I think is aligned with what you're working on that may help. But otherwise, feel free to write back to me so we can get clear. But as I contemplate, it still feels inauthentic on a deep level. So what feels inauthentic? Your contemplation? Maybe, maybe your contemplation is inauthentic on some level and or something I've run into is I'll be contemplating and what comes up is I am if inauthentic in a, in a weird way, not in a, 
like just as a result, because I'm going for what's true and perhaps what gets revealed in the effort of me going for what's true is my own inauthenticity, becomes revealed, then I may have a reaction that's like, oh, I feel inauthentic because maybe I am on some level. And so if there is a massive feeling of inauthenticity, okay, first thing to do, great. I mean, you don't have to say great, but don't push it away. Don't ignore it. Let it be there. Let it arise. See, and then you can get what that's about rather than trying to say that it's wrong to feel inauthentic. It's not wrong, it's just inauthentic. <clears throat> uh, an authentic on a deep level, like I have these beliefs and assumptions running in the background that I don't know how to overcome and transcend. Here's the other part. You don't need to overcome and transcend your beliefs. You don't need to overcome anything. You just need to become conscious of what is. Okay? Um, don't get stuck thinking, oh no, I can't become conscious of the truth until I overcome X, Y, or Z, or until I transcend my childhood, I can't become conscious. No, that's bullshit. You don't have to transcend anything, and you don't need to overcome anything when it comes to contemplation. You're just questioning what's already true, so it's already the case. See, so if you're worried about not overcoming, don't worry. Get what it is, and likely in the process of getting what it is on a deep level, you will overcome it. But the overcoming is more like a byproduct or a concentrated effort, but there is no prerequisite that you need to do that, okay? Just keep working on what's true. Keep going. Keep questioning deeply and don't deny anything. If something comes up that's inauthentic, okay, what's that about? Something comes up you don't like, acknowledge it. Okay, what's that about? Keep going. Don't stop. Okay. I understand that doing this is part of the work, but I still feel stuck. Okay, you still feel stuck? That's fine. Um, proceed anyway with your contemplation. Stuck or not stuck. So what? You feel stuck. That's likely a state of mind. And or you might be turning the same wheels over and over and over again and not acknowledging as if the source of the wheel is turning. So if you feel stuck and you keep noticing the same stuff, then go deeper with what is that that has you stuck? Like what's, what's really going on with you such that you're stuck? It's not the stuff you keep recognizing. It's something you haven't seen yet. So keep considering the matter so that you can reveal what that's about and then drop it. Or just drop it. I'm open. You can try that. You can try just, okay, be gone. <laughs> All right, good, handled. Maybe it just goes away. Who knows? Don't, don't, uh, don't sell yourself short. It's like I can subconsciously feel that my beliefs about reality are a veil over my perception and are hindering me from inquiry and not knowing. Yeah, they very, they very well might be. You know, your, your world and my world, likely full of beliefs, even, and, and there's hidden beliefs even that, that don't look like beliefs. So when we talk about in the Changchun world beliefs or hidden assumptions, it's not that it's not that there is something there that is a belief that you can grasp or find. You see, there is no object that is like a belief object, like inside your brain lodged in there or something like that. It's just going to look like reality. Oh, you're over there. I'm over here. Okay, that just looks like what's real. And the belief is what has it look that way in the first place. So then... You know, if you're having this, this idea and it sounds like you have some ideal that you should be free of all beliefs or free of all assumptions and then, then you can proceed. No, you are going to have certain beliefs and assumptions that will persist, that shape your world. So don't, and it's, my, my sense is to tell you, don't worry about that. Just keep contemplating whatever's true. And you may reveal the beliefs and then you, oh, that's a belief. But until you get that it is a belief, it won't show itself like a belief. It'll just look like, oh, that's reality out there. I hope that helps. So recently started reading, okay, emptying the cup. I'm having trouble discerning what direct experience and true insight are because I haven't had a direct experience before. And I think I may be getting stuck on semantics too much, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so don't, like in terms of direct consciousness or direct experience, trying to discern what those things are 
is different than trying to become conscious of whatever's true. See, so if, if you're trying to say become conscious, directly conscious of your own true nature, hey, there's a job. You may, the job is for you to question deeply, like in this case, what you are. If, you're, if you start questioning what is a direct experience, and especially if you start questioning it like an intellectual activity, mm, I wonder what a direct experience is. Or I wonder how that's different than an insight. This is a totally different direction than really digging into like, what are you now? So you can see that they're different directions. So again, it's, it sounds to me, I'm not sure, I should, again, clarify with you. And if any of this isn't clear, then write me. I should, you know, then concentrate on what you are. Don't worry about the trap of trying to discern an intellectual idea about direct experience. Become conscious of what you are, then you'll know. Likely, what a direct experience, as if direct experience is, because it's uh, direct. And, it, and we use the words experience, which really fucks people up, because then they think about experience like some sort of perceptive phenomenon, and then no, direct experience is too direct to actually be a quote-unquote experience. All experience that we have here right now is indirect. So then what are we talking about when we talk about direct experience? Who knows and who cares? It's, it's outside of perception itself, period. So don't worry about it. Anything you can experience is not it. Okay? So short version, don't worry. And keep going. You're doing, <laughs> you're doing good job. You're a cheerleader. Go, go. Keep going. Keep being honest. Tell the truth. Question. Wonder. I've read all about how our belief that we are a separate self is just a belief. But when I contemplate it, my experience of self feels so real and feels like a direct experience over a belief. So I'm getting stuck because I truly experience myself as a direct experience. Uh, I don't exactly know what you're saying there. And that's on me. Now, there is a part where it's like, okay, you've read about how it's a belief that we're separate, right? But in this work, you have to ground it in your own experience and be honest about that. So if you read somewhere, even if you read in Ralston books, or you hear me say something, or Peter say something, or you've read it in some fucking enlightenment book or whatever, oh, the self is an illusion, the separate self is an illusion, and then, and then it's like, oh, that sounds really good, and then you're, if you're smart, you can, you can rationalize that and realize, oh yeah, that could, that's definitely possible. But then you really test that against your experience. No, you don't experience yourself as non-separate. You experience yourself as a separation. You have to be honest about your experience, if that's the case. See, don't, don't just like believe some mamby-pamby bullshit in a book. Any book, period. You, you, you take what's being said and then you ground it in your experience. Like, take a look. Well, wait a minute. They say that... Me being a separate self is an illusion, but I don't experience that, huh? So there you go. Then what's what? Then what are they talking about? If they say something, but you don't have the experience of it, it doesn't matter. You just have to have intellect at that point. And in this work, this type of work, intellect is like bare minimum. It's like the it's like the the I don't know. It's like the surface tension on a on a flat, calm ocean. Or the, the tip of the iceberg. The intellect is like a starting place, not the ending. See? So, in regards to that, you have to be honest with what you experience, and then you can bounce that off of what's being said in the book, and then if it doesn't add up, then hey, there's, there's some questioning to, to do there. Get real with it, and don't just think about it. Okay. Um... Any thoughts on how to go about discerning direct experience from belief in my situation? Uh, let's see. In this case, you could just sit down it, regarding your contemplation. You could sit down and just contemplate, okay, what do I really believe is true? And then just run through that. Okay, I really believe it's true that I'm separate. I, you know, be honest. I really believe it's true that, you know, the sun's going to rise tomorrow. I really believe it's true that... 
or, or if it's in the case of your contemplation, like, okay, I'm not a separate self, but is that a belief? You can question that. Is that a belief? Are you just saying that? Or is that actually real? Or you can say, like, what is actually true here? And throw everything out. Like, take all the books, all the knowledge you've ever read, throw it out, and then consider, what, okay, what's true now? Any, any spiritual belief system, anything that could possibly come from any spiritual or religious belief system, or, a, or maybe even a psychological domain where people and doctors even say, well, this is true because of the brain and science and blah, 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 blah. If you don't experience that, like, you know, cells, for example, you have no experience of cells. So you can throw all that out and just go with what is right here, right now. And that can tend to, I think, open things up a little bit. You know, so it's like letting go of all of the crap, anything anybody said, anything anybody's ever told you, anything you've ever seen on YouTube. Language itself, you can throw that out even. Start from, start from a zero, so to speak, and that should help. Then uh, how, to about, how to go about discerning direct experience from belief? Well, in terms of direct experience, the best thing for you to do is just become directly conscious of something, okay? Don't worry about having a direct experience. Put all of your effort onto, your con onto the contemplation itself. That's what I recommend doing. So it's like, fuck direct experience. Just get what's true. What's true now? Keep going for that. And keep opening up to that. And then and, and likely, in that effort, you will have a direct experience. But don't go for a direct experience. Just go for whatever's true. Okay, so thank you for writing in. I hope this has been useful. And I'll catch you later. Thanks. Brendan Lee with Consciousness and Skill Worldwide. You are welcome and invited to visit my website, thebrendanlee.com. And you'll find all sorts of goodies there. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. It's been an honor and a privilege. Take care.